The top 16 women bowlers have descended on one of the nation's most historic racetracks. Each is looking to make history, but now only four remain. We are back at the historic Old Dominion building at the Richmond Raceway, a four-lane bowling arena has been created, custom made to house the final event of a PWBA tour season. It took a five-person crew 12 days and 600 hours to build. Here at Richmond, we started bowling by invitation only based on winning a tour event and points gained during the season. Now we're down to the final four, but only one will be crowned a major champion tonight. It is time for the PWBA Tour Championship from Richmond, Virginia and the Richmond Raceway. We have three matches in a semifinal bowling format tonight. We start with the second seed, Danielle McEwen taking on Maria Jose Rodriguez. And the top seeded defending champ, Shannon O'Keefe, battles five-time major champ, Kelly Kulik. The winners meet in the title match. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Richmond. It's great to have you with us. This is Dave Ryan, and it's great to present the final event of the PWBA Tour on CBS Sports Network in 2018. I'll be joined by Stephanie Johnson, the Players' Championship winner in the booth throughout the broadcast. And what a way to cap off this fantastic and exciting season. One bowler tonight will walk away with a piece of women's bowling history, big prize money, and a major championship. Now let's hear from our first two semifinalists with Stephanie Johnson, Lane Level. Danielle, you were seated number two this year. You've watched all week. What's going to be your strategy going into tonight's match? Um, I came in with a game plan. I feel pretty comfortable. I'm just going to try to make good shots and hope the pins fall in my favor. Best of luck. Maria, last night, you're 0-2 going into your last match to get here today. How are you going to use that momentum to win your match this evening? I'm just going to try to keep the same momentum that I had, even though I was down 0-2. Uh, just trust the process, and it will come. Best of luck. Thank you. Back to you, Dave. All right, Steph, they are ready. Now, what an atmosphere here in Richmond tonight. Packed house. Daniel McEwen's bracket to get this far. Well, Danielle did not bowl at all in competition because she was the number two seed with the number two points total heading in to the season finale here tonight. Maria Jose Rodriguez, as she said with Steph a moment ago, had a tough battle. Three five-game matches, and here we go. It is time to bowl from Richmond, Virginia tonight. McEwen Rodriguez will open us up. from Stony Point, New York. We're underway from Richmond. And all 10 back for Danielle McEwen, a great start. Danielle has won a major, so has Maria Jose Rodriguez. From Colombia. 2014 Queens, her major championship and she would love to add to the list tonight her first shot of the tour championship a strike and a great start Stephanie for each that's about as good as it gets uh, Dave 10 back right there you always want to come out of the gate uh, with a good shot so ready for some announcing tonight great to have you in the booth I this am. is gonna be fun let's have a great show This atmosphere is unmatched. I mean, this place is jammed tonight. It, it really is incredible. And look, Biff even decided to join us. <laughs> now we can have a show. Perfect start. <laughs> Three straight strikes to begin this Championship match, future for the sport, oil pattern. Steph, let's break it down tonight. What do you see? Well, tonight they're uh, bowling on a 40-foot pattern. It's a little lower volume than we're used to. Um, less games, less volume. So that was kind of the theory with that. You're going to see a lot of the girls probably playing in this zone right here. So it looks to be exactly what the first two girls are doing this match. Danielle has a 10 pin here. So what was your experience on the, this lane condition this week? You know, I, I experienced a lot of 10 pins myself. Um, it was easy to get the ball to the pocket. 
However, getting the ball to go through the pins the correct way was key. Um, and that ultimately is going to be the key to success for these girls uh, this evening. It's been a great year for Danielle. Has her 10 pin, has her mark. One title this year. A rising star on tour. One in Fountain Valley, California. And she has a win in each of the four years of the reboot of the PWBA Tour. She that includes does. a major. This event in Arlington in 2015. And she's got a seven pin. Just looked like she got her ball a little right there down lane. And uh, didn't quite have enough pinfall to get that seven pin out there. Danielle spoke to us last night, Stephanie, about her nerves. And, well, we saw six shows. It's been a great season, number two C overall, but she hasn't finished on TV. It's going to be interesting to see how she responds to the bright lights tonight. That's right. A reminder, any player rules a 300 game during the telecast will receive a $10,000 bonus courtesy of GoBowling.com. Visit GoBowling.com to find a local bowling center, get tips from the pros, and for all the latest news and information about your favorite sport, Bowling. Average to get here. With a longtime star from Team Columbia. It's got a hurry. Right hit and lucky just to leave one. Yep. You know, very much like Danielle's shot. You know, it looks like Maria's just getting it just down lane here. Not quite picking it up uh, to get through the pins the correct way. So she'll take that nine spare and move on. 29-year-old had some really tough matches we talked about. You watched here this week in Richmond. Rosio is Drepo in five, her fellow Colombian superstar, Jordan Richard, rookie of the year in five, and then Diana Zavialova, a two-time major champ in five as well. She was down 0-2, rallied to beat Diana here last night. It was really incredible to watch, actually. Maria is the only one that has made the show um, that all of her matches went to five games. How will that affect her on championship night? Great ball reaction there. In the one three pocket and all ten back. You know, based on her body language, she did not like that shot. Um, however, lane one as the week has gone on, has had a lot more back end than the others. So not surprised to see that ball come back from um, where she threw it. Fourth here for Danielle, works on a spare. They almost had the big four. But still, the four, six, ten, very tough lead. You know, Danielle is playing the lanes a little straighter. Um, again, like I mentioned, she hasn't bowled all week, so um, you know, it, it's advantageous in the sense that you're on the show. Um, however, leaves it for their step in. So it's an open frame for Danielle and Marie on the bench has a 24 pin lead. Let's break down Danielle's form. What do you see? Well, Danielle has a, uh, a five step approach. She gets her ball into the swing perfectly after that third step and she waits for it at the top, just a little bit right here. But she's got a really, really smooth downswing. And gets through the ball, clear as day. Great form. Right there, left lane. Treat her well. Her second strike of the match. But here comes Maria, fifth frame, chance for a 34 pin lead. And her confidence is growing, it looks like, with every shot. Talked about the momentum in her her pregame interview, and uh, looks like it's certainly on her side for start. She seemed so relieved last night when we spoke to her, just to make the show Those exhausting five-game matches. And now she looks very confident and determined. And expands the lead and takes advantage of Danielle's open, and now it's a 34-pin lead for Maria. 
Jose Rodriguez. It's about as good as it gets, Dave. Break down her form for us. And Maria here has a quick four-step approach again. Her backswing's quite a bit higher than Danielle's, but she's got a long slide, waits for the ball, catches it at the bottom. It allows her to play the lanes a lot more left to right. Her lone major came back in 2014, we mentioned at the Queens, a one-pin victory over Kelly Kulik, who is here tonight. She's kind of face off with Shannon O'Keefe in a battle. Now bowling Titans coming up here. And meanwhile, Maria Jose Rodriguez is a rolling. Another strike. She's got the turkey, and she has a 44-pin lead. We're underway in the 2018 PWBA Tour Championship from Richmond, Virginia. Back to bowling. Daniel McHugh and Stephanie Johnson is in some trouble. What does she have to do here? You know, I think one of Danielle's key to success is just staying in the moment, being in her comfort zone, making good shots. So like that. that's a perfect example right there. The number two seed is going to have to get a strike streak going here and have a chance. And Danielle right here, I mean, she's playing the lanes quite a bit straighter than Maria. You can see her ball is just going to go down the lane, probably crossing about eight at the arrows. Just a very smooth reaction overall. Gets 10 back. Looking for the turkey in the seventh. It has it. That's to how make you things wanna, interesting. That's how you want to come back from commercial break. Regroup a little bit. You know, it's never over till it's over. Uh, the beauty of our sport. You know, some of Maria's keys um, during this match are going to be, she told me, just trusting the process and, uh, quote, not freaking out. So I think she's doing a great job of that right now. This to go up by 34. 10 pin. Again, Maria's just... Playing a little more inside lane. Gets the ball quite a bit down lane over here. Ball doesn't drive through the pocket. Knock out that 10, but easy spare conversion. And to your point, as she told us last night, you got to trust the process. She was down 0-2 to Diana Zavialova. Things look pretty grim <laughs> here right. in Richmond, and she rallied because she trusted herself. And you see a little bit more about Maria. And this year came in as the number 13 seed of this event. 16 bowlers from all over the world here in Richmond. Of the 16, just three countries actually represented this time around. Columbia, one of those, along with Rocio Restrepo. Looking good, left lane. Looked really good. Someone in the crowd thought it looked really good. Uh, the energy here in this building is pretty incredible. The line to get in. I mean, it was a couple hours before the show we all got here. Yeah, absolutely. It was way out to the parking lot. This lane is having a tendency uh, have a stronger back end. She's still getting it out there pretty far, but lane one all week has just had that look. Danielle responds. As she told us last night, she's worked extensively with a sports psychologist group about focus. She does different drills. To keep her completely locked in as you see her season. I mean, 13 cash is six shows. Right. A great she's, average in the number two seat. She's certainly no rookie to this atmosphere. But she was disappointed when we talked to her last night about her year. She said, Yeah, I have number two seed, great in points, had the one win, but not what I really wanted to pile up some titles. Tonight's her chance. You know? Start your morning. Great match. First semifinal. Kulik O'Keefe to follow from Richmond. She answers. You know, when you're going strike for strike like that, you. Again, Maria is sliding quite a bit farther left than Danielle. 
Her axis rotation allows her to play more inside angles. Crossing the arrows around 15, out to about seven or eight. Those pins didn't have a chance. Maria beat Danielle and Rule this year on tour. Some experience against Danielle McEwen. There's a 10 pin and a very, very tight finish. And you heard Maria yell pick up. Um, she knew she may have got that ball a little far right. And of course, every pin matters at this point. Um, where your opponent is working on a double. Picks it up, no worries there. Family and friends watching back home in Colombia. She told us last night she wasn't sure if Dad Ramiro would actually be watching live because he gets so nervous, he just can't stand it. So maybe he'll stream it later <laughs> after he finds out. Maybe. Maybe. One of those dads just can't bear it. Of course, now Danielle has the opportunity to get up in the 10th frame. Tell she liked that one off her hand. So it all comes down to this for Danielle McEwen. 10 back for Maria. 237. She's on the bench, and all she can do is watch. Got to have two strikes. Here's the first, possibly for Danielle. No. Leaves a Good 10. Shot from Danielle. And that will do it. Jose, Maria Rodriguez, Maria Jose Rodriguez does win on the bench with 237 and a little relief for Maria. And she'll advance to the championship match. As disappointed as Danielle may have told us she was uh, with her season, I mean, hats off to her. She puts herself in a position to win time after time. You know, she won this event in 2015, her first title, her first major. Um, there's no doubt she's going to be disappointed, however. Um, she certainly gave it a run. It's not easy. Mom Susan coming down from New York today. She's her biggest fan. But in the end, Maria Jose Rodriguez, too much. 237, 224. The superstar from Colombia is through to the championship match. The second semi was well, going to be fun to watch. Kelly Kulik, Shannon O'Keefe. More from Richmond on the way. Watching the PWBA Tour on CBS Sports Network. Well done, Maria. And a 237, 224 win over Daniel McEwen in our first semifinal, thanks to eight strikes. The star from Colombia will play in the championship match against either Shannon O'Keefe or Kelly Kulik. Shannon won last year's tour championship here in Richmond. Memorable night for her, and it's this year's player of the year, but it hasn't been an easy road to the top for Shannon O'Keefe. against her it's the greatest of all time it's Liz Johnson and so there is a little bit of mental doubt that happens in a situation like that shoot it shoot it oh. around the 10 open frame years ago when I won my first title and then winning my first major in a roll off in a crazy dramatic fashion against Liz I started to not only believe but know it was possible yeah! incredible there's a difference in believing it's possible and knowing it's possible. And I think once I finally won that first one on TV, I was like, I can actually do this. Now I know it's possible. A strike for history. Yes! There it is! Yes! Shannon O'Keefe has done it. I think number one is opportunity. Having more opportunities to put yourself in a position to be on TV. Um, it really boils down to having the experience. Good. Yes! It was good. You heard her. I learned from my mistakes of bowling in fear, and I, I now bowl fearless.
follow the PWBA on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and the Bowl TV YouTube channel to keep up with the greatest women bowlers in the world. The latest video highlights the news and watch the new PWBA On the Road series each week to follow your favorites. What a match coming up. Shannon O'Keefe, 2018 Tour Player of the Year. Kelly Kulik, five-time major champ and a legend of the sport. It's on the way on CBS Sports Network. I'm Kelly Kulik, and this is the PWBA Tour. All right, Kelly, thanks. Friday night, 7.30 is the Go Bowling 250 NASCAR Xfinity Series race at Richmond Raceway. First race of the NASCAR Xfinity Series playoffs. And what a playoff we've got here between Shannon and Kelly. And they're joined now by Stephanie Lane Level. Kelly, last year you were seated. This year you advanced through the bracket. How are you going to use that to your advantage this evening? There's an advantage to bowling three matches. You really get to see the lanes break down in transition, know what the move should be. Is an advantage? I don't know. I still have to bowl the pins, and that's exactly what I'm going to do in this coming match. Best of luck to you. Thank you. Shannon, player of the year, defending champion, number one seed. What is going to be your key to success winning this first match? Staying in the moment and controlling what I can control. Best of luck to you. Thank you. Back to you, Dave. All right, Steph, thanks. Shannon going through those last preparations, was hustling over for the interview, and her bracket to get this far, while Shannon O'Keefe is the top seed, of course, did not bowl. As was the case with Danielle McEwen, Danielle lost. Uh, first or second seed has never won this event in this current format. And the top two seeds, determined by points in the season, don't bowl until the show, as the one and two seeds on TV. So here we go again. Kelly Kulik, five majors, and a legend of the sport. From New Jersey, Ted Pitt. Kelly's come so close to winning this year. Stephanie might know a thing or two about that. Victory for Stephanie Johnson in Plano, of course, at the Tour Championship in August. 10 pin for KK. Got it. And has her mark to begin the semifinal against Shannon O'Keefe. I think your emotions have to be interesting here. One of your best friends in the world is Shannon O'Keefe. You guys roommates on tour for much of the season. You're very close with Kelly. You've competed against these great bowlers so many times. What's going through your mind right now, Steph? You know, uh, May the best player win, right? <laughs> you know, it's Something just else. What a matchup. All about execution and hoping the pins fall your way. Here is Shannon O'Keefe. Tremendous season and a good start for her. With all 10 back. So I'd like to acknowledge Shannon doing great work on TV. Kelly as well, but they'd rather be bowling here tonight. Absolutely. Shannon has a very strong four-step approach. Gets her ball into the swing early. Back swing, not very high but she uses her legs so much. And she's so aggressive at the bottom. Very solid. Tremendous athlete grew up playing softball and soccer. He told us last night that some of the form from her softball pitching games occasionally will revert to her bowling game, and she's had to make some adjustments. Hasn't been altogether positive with the release and the way your hips turn the softball sure. pitcher compared to the bowling release, but this one looks pretty good. She's off to a great start tonight. Absolutely. Kind of mirror image of Danielle's season away for Shannon. Yes, she has the majors, but the last part of her year, she wasn't really happy. Mm -hmm. Didn't win. That's the, the competitor stretch. in all of us. Right. You know, you have such high expectations for yourself. And, uh, you know, we're always working on our games, room for improvement. Second frame for Kelly. Wow, looks perfect. Those pins had no chance, nope. just shrapnel on the back of the pin. And here we see Kelly has a five-step approach, gets her ball into the swing. She has a much higher backswing than Shannon. Her long legs creates that long slide. She waits for it at the bottom, gets around it. 
splits the eight line. That's a rematch of last year's championship right here in Richmond. Great shot, Kelly Kewick, left lane. 220-203, the final in the championship here a year ago. Shannon struck six of seven times after a tremendous three ball roll off thriller with Liz Johnson in the semifinals. It was remarkable. You can't even write that script, Dave. Oh, man. That was incredible. She earned that one. And, you know, asking her, being uh, the number one seed this year, she's she's watched all week. She's taken notes of, you know, lanes one and two, balls going down the lane. She, she's really just going to focus on execution. That had a hurry. It did enough. And I'll turn back. You need a little luck in this game, Dave. Once in a while. She will take that, regroup here. You know, it looked like she just got that ball a little right down lane. It scoots, gets lucky, almost the 2 8. Seven shows this year, tops on tour, tops in earnings, tops in points, just a tremendous breakout year for her. But you know her better than anyone. <laughs> She's still She's had a tremendous season hungry and for more. Uh, her goals are never ending, which is pretty inspiring. Looks for the front four, and a great start continues for Shannon O'Keefe. All 10 back again. She's certainly in the zone. Her Bearcats are at home watching her. Head women's coach, McHenry University, outside St. Louis. And she's got the Bearcat purple tonight. She does. All of her Bearcats are watching. There's a watch party every time she's on TV. That's a lot. A lot of watch parties. Ah, Kellyanne. Well, she didn't like it at all. It's crossing over. Center Brooklyn strike. And a big miss there. What happened, Steph? Yeah, I mean, you hear her, you know, calling herself out. Um, just totally got the ball into the lane. Got right off her hand slow. Tries to catch it. This is her target left. And. As a result goes Brooklyn. Has the mark. So it does cover, but facing a buzzsaw in Shannon O'Keefe tonight. It has been perfect through four. Go to the finals. Josie Barnes doing stats tonight. Thank you, Josie, for your great help in the booth with us. And legend Liz Johnson in three straight. And Liz Culkin, U.S. Open champ this year in four. What did you see from Kelly's competition leading up to the show? You know, there's no easy road when you get to the tour championships. Um, these ladies advanced to this event up to the culmination of their season. So um, I want to say she's had an advantageous um, go at it, bowling all the matches. Just didn't hurry enough. Lost that ball reaction down the left lane. That was a good shot. Yeah, and you can hear Tough her say lead. read. So we'll take a look at that. Probably a little overcompensation from the shot on the, the right lane, which she missed. Her ball gets a little right down lane here. Just doesn't quite pick up. Resulting in the bucket. Not the easiest of spares. Got a lot to cover and gets all four nicely done. And runner up Kelly Kulik in the last two years. This event. Any player rolls a 300 game during the telecast will receive a $10,000 bonus courtesy of GoBowling.com. Visit GoBowling.com to find local bowling centers. Get tips from the pros and for all the latest news and information about your favorite sport, bowling. Here Shannon looks for the front five. Try to stay perfect. Four seven. Sounded like she whispered hold. Um, Mr. Target a little left. Got lucky and carried the 10 out of there.
you know, chatting with Shannon, um, you know, she really just needs to focus on her execution. Every shot matters. She's bowling the lanes, not her opponent. 4-7 takes care of business, and with that, we continue. The lack of a 300 game of this event so far hasn't happened yet. The year for Shannon, just a tremendous season for your best friend. It's incredible. Like I said, her, her goals are never ending, and she just keeps checking off her bucket list. Um, it, it's amazing to watch, and of course, she would love nothing more than to cap off her season to win this event. She just wants to be a good example for her little Bearcats at home. Her Bearcats. She's the mama Bearcat, all right. She and husband Brian coach the team. Brian is here. Last year, he's in Mexico. Team USA coaching duties. Open to watch a title of person this time. And some help on the seven boy. Nearly another lucky strike. Ball doesn't quite drive through the pocket as you see a little deflection there. Um, not enough to kick out that seven pin. Uh, should be an easy spare conversion for Shannon. There's a seven, there's a spare. We should mention that Shannon Bryant celebrated her 14th anniversary this week. So they did. It's all set up for Shannon to keep the defender title, but Kelly Kulik has other ideas. Second semifinal continues when we return to Richmond house again and we are watching some tremendous bowling to wrap up 2018 on the PWBA tour back to the second semi Kulik works on a spare down 23 needs some strikes has a strike and Stephanie that's exactly what Kelly needed that is how you want to come back from a commercial break right there Plus the Cole Custer. That was pretty cool to get a chance to talk that to was the top neat. young drivers in NASCAR. He's used to driving fast cars. Very fast. The double zero Ford. He Our won the Ford EcoBoost 300 at Homestead. Got 42 top tens for a young guy. Five poles. Pretty impressive. That is incredible. Cole Custer. Great to see him here tonight. Seventh for Kelly. Heel. It did. That ball listened. It listened to her. She, she yelled peel. She was really looking for that ball to pick up on that spot and kick out that 10 pin. Old Dominion building, historic. Temporary bowling center for a second straight year. We saw top of the broadcast what goes into putting this bowling set together. 500 hours, 12 days, a five person crew working around the clock to make this happen. And Special thanks to all who have helped us get through the outer bands of Hurricane Florence. Right. Ringing 10 pin there for Shannon. Pretty scary early this week. Stephanie, some tornadoes in this area. 13 were reported in Richmond on Monday. We hope everyone's safe out there. Absolutely. We had quite a bit of a interesting day with the, the rain delay, the tornado warnings. Um, had some roof issues, but you know. Here we are. <laughs> we made it through. Seventh here for Shannon. There is the 10 pin at her mark. Please help those affected by natural disasters like Hurricane Florence. Visit redcross.org for more information. You know, everyone kept asking Shannon about, you know, defending her title this year, and she really didn't want to look at it that way. Um, she believed that she had nothing to defend, that she earned it last year. So that is exactly her mindset going into tonight's match. Sit. And yeah. and those pins had no chance. 60 feet to success for Shannon O'Keefe. All 10 back in the pit. Weekdays at noon Eastern, Jim Rome welcomes you to the jungle for three hours of hot takes, high impact interviews, and a steady dose of the clones. It's the Jim Rome Show only on CBS Sports Network. Had a really close match here. Max score numbers, look at that. Kelly to cut it to two. Ten down. I told you earlier, Dave, you need some luck. 
Got a little bit of luck on Kelly's side. Her body language doesn't seem like she liked it that much. A little left off her hand. Doesn't quite get to the right. Goes a little high flush and carries the 4-7. It's only her second show of the year. Well, she made it in Plano, your championship at your home center in the Metroplex last month. Here she is again. What a match with O'Keefe. Kelly Kulik trying to return to greatness. Has a strike left lane. And we have ourselves a finish brewing, Stephanie Johnson. She's keeping herself alive, you know, and some of her keys right here are working on that push away. She, she mentioned she needed to keep it going forward and stay a bit taller through the shot. She seems to be doing that just fine. Up steps Shannon O'Keefe, the player of the year. Check the stack pack. Shannon's down to the front four. Her night frame. That's a high shot. That's a miss. And his husband, Brian, watches. That's a very tough leave. Yeah, it's, it's certainly makeable. Uh, you could tell off her hand she didn't like it. She grabbed a little, missed inside. She is playing a little straighter than Kelly is. This pattern didn't have a lot of hold in the middle part of the lane. A lot to cover. Can't do it. Only gets seven. Four, seven, ten up. And in the foundation frame, a disastrous open. And look at the score switch just like that. Kelly Kulik is up by 24 on the bench. And you know, Dave, I think it's important we talk about the lane surface. Um, it's a brand new lane surface, so uh, the oil tends to transition a lot quicker, which I believe we're actually seeing right now. Left lane, Shannon, and no tap on the seven, so it stands. It's very typical um, to go high on one lane, go light on the next. Um, make a full spare for Shannon. There's the seven. And Neil Miller presenting Player of the Year honors to Shannon O'Keefe for the first time in her great career. What a moment and a season for Shannon O'Keefe. Absolutely incredible. And Shannon would be the first to tell you that one event that doesn't define you. As intense as they come, finishes with a 210. She said after failing to win after the Queens, you see Kelly needs six to win. Shannon went back to the drawing board so many times, sometimes overanalyzing. She felt she felt she was in a great place right. here tonight. But Kelly's on the verge of knocking off a player of the year. Six for the title match. Kelly Kulik from Union, New Jersey, has all ten of Brooklyn strike from Brooklyn with love. And all 10 back wraps up the match in the semifinal. She's off to the championship tilt. If that doesn't loosen your arm swing, Dave, I don't know what's going to do that. You know, luck is on her side tonight, and that is a testament right there. I wouldn't doubt. Yep, she's going to make a ball change, um, get another look. She's obviously already won this match. Um, she's trying to stay one step ahead of the transition. Her opponent is likely going to be playing inside as well. Gut wrenching, heartbreaking defeat in this event the last two years in the championship match. So she will avenge her loss to Shannon in this very building a year ago. And again, <laughs> she'll go Here we are. for a major title. Maria Jose Rodriguez is going to stand in her way. 243 210. The player of the year and defending champ knocked off by the 12 seed and five time major champ Kelly Hewlett. She will bowl for a title against Maria Jose Rodriguez of Colombia. When we return to Richmond, Virginia, 
Two semis in the books. Kelly's loving it. <laughs> She's a pretty good dancer. Championship match still to come on CBS Sports Network. Kelly Kewitt, great finish to the second semifinal. Knocks off the defending champion player of the year, Shannon O'Keefe, 243, 210. And she will advance to the championship match against Maria Jose Rodriguez. The finals now set here in Richmond. So year four of the revamp PWBA is almost in the books. And 11 different champions as well as some unforgettable moments. Emil Williams Jr. takes a look back. Thanks, Dave. Heading into the 2018 PWBA season, the question on everyone's mind was whether anyone could unseat Liz Johnson, who had captured Player of the Year honors in each of the previous three seasons. And Shannon O'Keefe made it very clear in week one that she would be the person to do it. My goal is to be Player of the Year. You know, I, I want that. I, I, I want it. She jumped out to a huge points lead after taking home two of the season's first four titles. And despite a late season scare at the hands of Danielle McEwen, O'Keefe was able to take home the honor. The Tour's rookie class was also arguably the best since 2015 with a crop of talented collegiate stars making the jump to the PWBA. But Jordan Richard would ultimately rise to the top of the class after winning the first title of her young career in Pennsylvania and then making the final four telecast of the season heading into the Tour Championship. The comeback player of the year had to be Liz Colkin, who struggled with her game for the past two seasons after a successful rookie campaign in 2015. Colkin roared back onto the scene with a win in the U.S. Women's Open and ranked fifth in points heading into the PWBA Tour Championship. And finally, Stephanie Johnson gave us the year's most emotional moment with a thrilling hometown victory at the Cubica AMF PWBA Players Championship, which also happened to be her first career major title. It's been a memorable season, and all that's left now is determining which one of these talented athletes We'll take home the tour's biggest trophy at the PWBA Tour Championship right here in Richmond. Email, thanks. Great job. Of the Whiskey <laughs> Nut Lead Dancers. That's Kelly's dance group back home in New Jersey. They're watching right now. There's a watch party going on. No dance class. They want to see Kelly take home a championship. Look at KK Dance. Maria Jose Rodriguez. Kulik next. The PWBA Tour, and that's the trophy they're competing for here tonight at the Old Dominion Building, the Richmond Raceway. The bracket, Stephanie, tonight. Shannon O'Keefe falls to Kelly Kulik. Kelly had the great look into that 1 3 pocket in that second semifinal. Maria, dominant as well. Lots of high scores, Dave. I expect nothing less from this final match. Here we go, bowling fans. Championship match time from Richmond. Who makes women's bowling history tonight? We're about to find out. Kelly Kulik gets us started. Left lane with a strike. And we will note, Dave, she did make a ball change during that commercial break. Maria told us last night she just wanted to win one game in nope. the matches leading up to the possibility of making the show. And here she is. That was her motto, one game at a time. <laughs> Little break there. She was begging for it. Hook, 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 hook. And it listened. Just enough. Get those, get those nerves uh, shaken off a little bit. We will see in the recap right here. Looks like she's moved a little bit, but she has gotten this ball way outside here. Does not have a lot of time to get back, but she gets lucky. Kicks off that 7-10. And she hasn't bowled for about an hour. I mean, it's been a while. You've got to wait yep, for the second she's been semifinal. Sitting, been watching, paying attention to lane transition. Left lane. A tap on the 10, and down it goes. Same thing. Little love tap. She will take it, sit down. Gets that ball out to about the three board. But lane one all week has had that tendency of a, quite a bit of a sharper back end. So it's a little love tap with the six pin falling into the gutter.
Kelly tries to continue our perfect start. And the four pin stands close. Just a little high flush. She did switch balls on both lanes. She's probably going to feel her way through this. Should be an easy spare conversion for her. Been an arduous, frustrating year for Kelly at times. Has told us throughout the year. Kind of felt like a factory worker, just punching in, punching out, not really putting a lot of emotion into it. Trying to get everything square in her life. So she talk. has that real hunger again, and she's shown that this week. Hey. Are you looking for some great PWBA gear? Then visit the official online store of the PWBA at shoppwba.com. What are your thoughts of Kelly's run here? You know, Dave, when I spoke with her earlier, she told me she really had no expectations on last year's outcome. Um, she was kind of coming in slightly numb, and she was just going to bowl the best that she could. And, you know, not really focusing on what happened last year, but what could happen this year. So here we are in the final match. Third frame. What do you think? There it goes. It's wobbling. It's thinking about it. And the seven pin finally falls. Wow. The crowd is off the charts on that. Wow. Amazing. That was incredible. Thank goodness for a slow rack. Just a little. Just perfect. Pit. So much pin action right there. Maria responds. Only shrapnel left in the pit. Those pins had no chance. Her perfect start continues. Again, she's just staying cool, calm, and collected. You know, she did again mention to me she just doesn't want to freak out and just really trust in her ability in the process. You know, she earned her way pulling all the matches, just like Kelly. So a fun fact, Dave, no one that's been seated on the Tour Championships telecast has actually ever won this event. Continues so here we are again, number 12 seed and the number 13 seed. Breakdown, left and right lane for Maria so far. <laughs> 10 pin. Easy conversion here for her, I would imagine. So we will not have a 300 game at this year's Tour Championship. Ten pin up, ten pin down. For the 13th seed, Maria Jose Rodriguez. Only one title for the 29-year-old in her career so far. Great accolades. College at Maryland Eastern Shore for Keller's Moorhead State before hitting the tour and putting forth a Hall of Fame caliber career, without question. Quick shout out to her dad, her sisters, Jackie and Jen, all their family watching her back home. Yeah, everyone's New watching New Jersey. Jersey. You hear her talk. You hear her mumbling in her microphone that her Execution isn't the greatest, and the ball reaction isn't as well. She gets around that one a little bit. Gets a little right down lane. There's two, and her mark. We keep things very interesting. Kelly's season, Steph, how do you break it down? Well, she's built 13 events this year. She's cashed in all of them. This is her second championship round appearance, of course, making the Players' Championships finals as well. Averaged over 210 for the season. Um, certainly nothing to hang your head about, even though she would probably argue otherwise. Yeah, she has told us this year that before the season, she questioned whether or not she'd be back in 2019. Just didn't have the motivation. Didn't feel hungry or satisfied just with the way things were going on and off the lanes. But that hunger's back now. 
she's feeling. Rolling well. Ten pin, a good shot again for Kelly. Another good shot. As I mentioned, she doesn't seem like she's comfortable with that ball reaction. I would imagine here during our commercial break, she's going to chat with her ball reps and figure something out. There's 10, there's her mark. And Leo Milligan honoring Jordan Richard, Rookie of the Year. Congrats to Jordan, who bowled so well this year. A win in Pennsylvania, and then lots of TV appearances after that. She really did, Dave, and we have to note that she didn't even bowl the entire season. So that's incredible. Had to finish up her collegiate studies and all that. You know, graduated from all college that important at stuff. Arkansas State. That is important. Fifth frame, 20 pin lead, 10 pin. We saw a lot of that this week, Dave. You know, the steeper the angles in the front, the ball just didn't have enough energy down lane to drive through the pins. So, be interesting to see how this commercial break plays out and if they make any changes, both Maria and Kelly. There's a 10 pin, but with that spare and almost to the halfway point, things are very interesting. We should also note here that Maria is actually using two different balls in this particular match. Do you agree with that strategy? I don't disagree with that strategy, Dave. You know, I think at this point, you do what you have to do. All 10 back. Looks like it's working pretty well, Stephanie. No question about it. Great finish on the way. Maria Jose Rodriguez, Kelly Kulik. Only one will be a major champion in Richmond. We'll find out who next. <laughs> Kelly Kulik down by 19 pins. Championship match here in Richmond. Speaking moments ago with her ball reps. I was going to scoot back to the right. Yeah. Well, see, I went, see, that's nothing, because I, I missed inward over there and left the four pin. So it's like, it's, I'm just caught, I'm, I'm caught in between. I feel like the ball is too long, so, and then I, I don't have the hole left in front of me. Just, uh, it's just that one little stepping piece. Hello to Pat Sinello, Cubica AMF chairman of the board. Great to see Pat here again in Richmond. All right, Stephanie, I'll go back to what Kelly was talking about with her reps. What do you think? You know, I, I, all week Kelly's strategy has not been to play the lane straighter. Um, she's had the most success when she's been a little steeper through the fronts, getting her ball to slow down. I really think that's probably going to be her key right here. She's down 19. Half a match to make it up and take home a major championship. That's the way to get that started. And it looks like it, that's exactly what she did. She's crossing the arrows right there around uh, 17, 18. Ball goes through the pins perfectly. Now we're getting into crunch time. Seventh frame, can cut it to nine. Maria's working on a strike herself in her seventh. A little regroup here. Distraction down lane. You know, the setup is very unique. Lots of noise, lots of things going on. Very easy to be distracted. So much on the line. We need to regroup. Huge shot for Kelly. In the seven. Ten back. That's how you do it, Dave. It's a nine pin match. Commercial break. Huge double for Kelly. A couple shots before that, she wasn't comfortable. She looks very comfortable here again. Crossing about 17 with the arrows, getting it to about 7-8. Just like we mentioned, steeper angles. Just getting that ball to slow down a little bit. 10 back. 
where he looks for a second major. Great shot. And the response to the pressure Kelly put on her with her strikes, she doubles, and she's back up 19. Absolutely. Again, Maria's just going to focus on the things she can control. Just keeping herself in check. She tends to, her, her brain just goes so fast. She's, she needs to sometimes just slow down, take a little breather. Member of Team Columbia since 2009. Junior team in that nation, 2004. A lot of international success. And here she is on the verge of a major. Left lane, another big shot in the eighth. And all 10 back again for Maria, the 13th seed. Crunches 10 into the pit. She's up 29. Great shot by Maria here. Again, playing a similar angle as Kelly. About 17, 18 through the arrows, getting it to 7, 8 down lane. The ball stands up nicely, goes through the pins perfectly. Time is now for Kelly to respond. Step one complete. It's not over, Dave. Again, Kelly has so much success opening up her angles. Getting her ball down lane. So four bagger. In her knife. Down. 19. Good foundation frame right here. Get herself comfortable, set up in the 10th frame. We put all of that pressure on Maria. Fly on the approach, sorry. <laughs> Do I squat at it or? Well, <laughs> good question. There, there is a, actually a actually large fly, a fly on the approach. It's on another approach. obstacle in our sport. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not often you see <laughs> professional sports. She a nailed it. Athlete take a fly out of play. A couple days ago, we had some water. Today, uh, maybe some flies. You, you, you never know. Just take your time, regroup, get set up here. Exactly what she's going to do. Another enormous shot for Kelly Kulin. Ten back. It's pretty incredible, Dave. Two she heavyweight stars are going head to head here, Stephanie, and they are exchanging these haymakers strike as strike. we head down the stretch. This is fun to watch. Well, we knew we'd have a high scoring match, so here we are. Nine pin match. Foundation frame for Maria. This is a huge shot for Maria. Max scores. To put the pressure on Kelly in the 10th frame. She wants this one badly. And 10 oh. pin, it's a good shot. Great shot. But not a strike, and the door is open. Almost even looks like she hit it at the bottom quite a bit. Ball is online. The six just wraps around. Doesn't quite get it. Rothering 10 pin, there's the single pin. Conversion. She cannot shut out Kelly Kulik now. After just missing, and the max scores. Well, that's changed considerably. It has shifted. Both at um, Kelly, she'll have a chance. Certainly, it's in Maria's court at this point to uh, put the pressure on Kelly to show up in the 10th frame and earn her title. I don't think Kelly would have it any other way. Totally agree. <laughs> Ten pin stands. This ball just hits a little flatter, a little deflection. You see the six pin just kind of fall over and hang out there. Not enough energy to knock it over. Easy spare conversion. Looking for a big fill shot just to put as much pressure on Kelly as possible.
has a strike to wrap it up and has a 236. And now up steps Kelly Kulik with a chance at bowling history. We have to note Kelly was a higher seed, so she did opt to finish the match last, which leads me to believe she's comfortable in lane two. And this is certainly. That's what you need, Steph. Strike, not a spare to wrap it up. She's got a strike. Kelly Kula. The hit of the 10, it stands! Wow. And that is it. Maria Jose Rodriguez is going to win the 2018 PWBA Tour Championship. Stephanie, it was this close. Wow. She tasted it. Looked like she may have just got that a little far right. Again, the sixth one just kind of fell over. I mean, great bowling by Kelly. Wow. All smiles for the star from Columbia because she's wrapped it up and realizing now the numbers are right for her. Lucia Rostrepo was watching in the crowd tonight. Fellow star Columbia. A Brooklyn strike late for Kelly. Hugs all around fellow tour members. For Maria Jose Rodriguez. She's a winner in Richmond, Virginia. So she's won her ball. first ever PWBA Tour Championship. Her second career major trophy time for Maria tonight. Everyone back in Colombia is celebrating right now. Maria Jose Rodriguez, a major champion again. Maria Jose Rodriguez, a winner tonight, our BPAA. Moment of the match, Kelly Kulik in the 10th frame. Needed a strike and nine spare, and she could have won the Tour Championship. It was a great shot off her hand, but leaves the 10 pin. And on the bench, Maria Jose Rodriguez is the winner. Stephanie with Dennis Bickmeyer from the Richmond Raceway. Check and trophy presentation time. Stephanie, go ahead. Maria, congratulations. Here to present the championship trophy is president of the Richmond Raceway, Dennis Bickmeyer. A few words. Well, first of all, thank you to Cubica AMF. What an amazing job transforming this facility into what you see here tonight. So thank you, Cubica AMF, uh, fan fantastic partners. Maria, you are the PWBA Tour Champion. Congratulations on behalf of all of us here at Richmond Raceway and all of these great bowling fans. Congratulations. Enjoy. Maria, this is your first tour win of the relaunch tour. Your last title was the 2014 USBC Queens, another major. How does this one rank? In the top, obviously. <laughs> um, this is incredible. I thought I was cursed. I thought I, I was not going to be able to win. I work hard. Uh, thank you to the Motive guys. Thank you for all my amazing bowling balls, Red Bull, Grey Bull, everything. I mean, I can't, I don't even have any words right now. I'm, I'm just out of the blue. I told myself this is my week. Just keep trusting it. Even if you're losing by a thousand, it's my week. It's going to happen. And it did. Amazing. Congratulations again. Back to you, Dave. Stephanie, thank you. And what a night to remember for Maria Jose Rodriguez. We'll wrap things up from Richmond, Virginia, right after this. Time to raise that trophy, Maria. Right next to the GoBowing.com car of Cole Custer, it's time to celebrate for Maria Jose Rodriguez, a winner tonight here in Richmond, Virginia, her second career major as she knocks off Kelly Kulik in the championship match. Congratulations to Maria Jose Rodriguez, winner of the 2018 PW.